Welcome to Creative Tin Channel. Today I have a machine knitting project done on the LK150 knitting machine. I'm going to make a simple top and this is a diagram. Basically, I have the top part and I will make one piece for the front, one for the back. It's just a rectangle piece and I try to have a little bit of lace so it's more drapery and it's not too stiff. And the bottom part will be just rectangle or square. And for the edge, I try to do a little bit of the scallop. So totally there are four rectangles and then I will sew up the top, leaving the opening. And the underarm and then the side seams. So this should be a very straightforward project. And you just need a few measurements, how wide you want the sweater to be, and the sleeve opening here. And we try to be a little bit oversized so you will fit better. So I have around 20 for the width, and I have about 10 inches for the sleeve opening. And for the neck opening, it's also around 10 inches. And here I start my first piece. This will be on the top, that's the sleeve opening. And I try to add a little bit holes in the middle as lace, so the fabric will have more drape. And the top will be the neck opening. And you can see it kind of draped down. So I don't think I will need to add any ribbon or anything, but you can always add uh, edge, even crochet edge or hand knit ribbon. And this is the back side. I actually like the back side more because you can see the holes, the lace opening better. It's different texture and you can decide which side you will be the front side. For the edge, I have a little bit scallop. So it just adds a little bit more detail. And that's another side. So we will need another piece of the top and we will knit from one side and go all the way to the other side. For the yarn, I'm using the Knit Picks Heathery Sports Weight and uh, wind it into a cake so it's easier for machine knitting. For the main tension, I use Tension 7 and also Tension 7 on the mast. But for the edge, I lower it to tension 5, so it's not too big, you look nicer. For the cast on, I have from left 21 to the right 21. And I'm just going to do simple e wrap and knit 5 rows. Now we are going to create some holes so you will have that scallop look. I'm trying to do around every five stitches because it's easier to see from the ruler here. So I will start with this one, the second one, transfer to the first one. And I will leave the empty needle back to the B position. After transfer, I have four stitches in between. The next. So that's the turning point. Now I'm going to need another five rows. Now you can see there's a rows of holes in the middle. Now we can start folding it back using the transferring tool and then hand it back to the needle. Now I hand the way back. I'm going to change my tension to number seven. I'm going to start with three plain rows. 
Now I'm going to start the transfer of the lace holes and I will try to keep it simple so the holes will be in between the marked numbers it will be the third needle in the center of the two numbers I started from the left side here is the center stitch I transfer to the left you can transfer to the right, but I try to keep it consistent. So everything transfer to the left. And for this section, I will place the empty needle back to A. And we just continue doing that. Here is the second hose. Transfer to the left. Place it back to A. So it's four stitches in between the two holes. This is the next one. So I end up with three stitches on both ends. So I'm going to need three rows. And here's what it looks like. You'll see the lines. And for the next three rows, we are going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to move all the empty needles to the B. So you'll be knitted. And now we are going to need three rows. And when you look at the fabric, you will see the first pass we create the holes and then we create another two solid lines just the plain stocking and stitches and we just keep repeating that I'm going to create holes again and place the empty needle in A position so we create three rows with the lines here and then we'll move the empty needles to the B position to create the holes and two straight lines so that's what it will look like we have the edge, we have three rows of plain, and then three rows with the lines. And then we change it to the B position. So we have holes and uh, two rows of plain. And another variation is to have the holes offset. So you're in between the previous holes, like here, the center. It will create a different look. So I will keep doing that. Now we are going to create holes again. And I will just follow the holes before. Go straight up. So it's easy to find which stitch to transfer. And I keep empty needle to A first. Now we'll do three rows. And now we move all the empty needle back to B. So it will be knitted. And we'll need three rows. And the next section, we start to create the holes again. So here, this is the line. That's the stitch we transfer. And I always go to the left. So we'll just keep repeating that until it's the length you want. And I try to have a little bit of sleeves. So my total length will be around 25 inches. And according to my calculation of the sample, it will be about 138 rows. Now I have 139 rows. I'm going to need three more plain rows and starting to do the edging. So that's what we have so far. And that's the right side. And for the edge, I change the tension back to number five. And I will need five rows. Now I'm going to create the holes just like the beginning. I start with the second one, transfer to the left. 
and keep the empty needle in the B so you will be knitted back. And I have four stitches in between. The fifth stitch transfer to the fourth. Empty needle back to B. Four stitches in between the fifth one. And we'll keep going to the end. Now we are ready to knit five more rows. And we just need to bind off now. I'm going to start picking up stitches. And you can kind of see it because we changed the tension. You will see a little line that looks a little bit different here. I'll pick up the one on the side first and hand it back to the first needle. And you just follow along. We'll pick up this one, this one, this. Now we have two stitches on each needle. You can knit one row and bind off, or you can just sew up with the yarn tail. And that's what I'm going to do. It will be less bulky. So you leave yarn tail at least three times of the width. And I'm going to use a yarn needle and sew it back. I'm going to go from the front to the back first. Go through both stitches and then go to the next stitch. The next needle, we have two stitches. Go from the back to the front and then we go from to the back, back to the first needle. Now we work on the first needle twice so I can take it off the needle. And now we go to the second needle from the right and from the back to the front. And we just keep doing that until the end. That's the bind off. Now I have two pieces ready. I just place it on top of each other and find out the opening you want. Place a mark and we can start sewing. The next part is to do the rectangles. We'll just need two pieces of rectangle. And I want to start from the bottom up so we can do the same scallop. We'll start with tension five, need five rows, and we do the transferring for the holes and then knit five more rows and hand the cast on stitches back to the needle and continue knitting the main piece with tension seven. And I cast on from left 47 until right 47. And I will do the simple e wrap cast on and knit five rows. So I transfer stitches, every fifth stitch. And on the left side, I have two extra stitches. For the right side, I have one stitch on the side and then the lace hole. Now I'm going to need five rows. And I will take off the weight and uh, hand it back. So the process will be just like before. I will have about 12 or 13 inches times my 5.5 row per inch. So that's how many rows I will need. So this is my swatch, about 4.5 stitch per inch and 5.5 row per inch. And you can adjust based on your own sample. I decide to transfer some stitches and place empty needle to A so you will create some lines. I think you will create an interesting pattern and you will be a little bit more stretchy. And I'm going to need about 70 rows and I will do another one and sew them up. 
That's after light steam. I think this project turned out pretty well, and it only takes about two days to finish. I hope you enjoy this video, and see you next week.